Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AM Impact on Your Health is heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. Aim impact on your health, or each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, well, folks, uh, I'm going to take the uh, spotlight just a little bit in anticipation of much that is up and coming in the world of autoimmune and to the use of a treatment that has amplified itself in being able to help in that endeavor. Talking about LDA, we've been doing it here in this office since the fall of 2012. Well, LDA is about ready to take on new proportions, and the curable and correctable disease list has just gone meteoric. When I go through that list, I want to be concentrating myself today discussing the various autoimmune diseases. That's right, autoimmune diseases that are fixable and correctable being you know, via LDA, you want to get a pencil and paper so that you can write down the list. If you don't suffer from any of these, and I really hope you don't, you're going to know somebody who does, and they're not going to be able to understand that there is a treatment for each and every one of these that can get these repaired, refixed, and, uh, and get them established back to health once again. So today, LDA and the list of the autoimmune diseases that are correctable by it. This is all in anticipation of our good friend, Dr. Ty Vincent. I'll talk about him in just a little bit. Look, if in the course of our discussion today you want to call and ask a question or to make a comment, the number to do so, as you should know by now, is to dial us up at 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. I'll be listening for that knock on the door, and I will let you in the store. Okay. I'm uh, going to put out a, a big thank you for um, all the folks that I met out at the Young Living Conference that held this week at the uh, Embassy Suites out there at Charrington Plaza in Moon Township. Uh, a group of people that uh, were very inquisitive about what we do here and what we offer took the time to come up and say hello to me. Their own individual issues um, were conveyed to me and literally uh, were, I think, comforted or at least. Uh, became quimsical on what we do, and hopefully we'll see them in the office in the up-and-coming weeks. Uh, Susie Weiss did a fantastic job with uh, getting there, her whole group uh, thinking about essential oils, and in particular the, the Young Living um, component, the Gary Young um, set of products that we call Young Living, and it was just a wonderful day out there. I want to thank her for her invite as well as the countless numbers of people that I happen to meet. Look forward to seeing you soon in the office. Speaking of Susie Weiss, uh, she's going to be our guest come here on uh, December. I believe it's December 1, yes, uh, December 1, a Monday, because she'll be in the office on Thursday, December 4th at 10 o'clock. I finally know the time. It moves around a bit, so that it's never really the same time all the time. This particular one is an early one, 10 o'clock in the morning, usually goes for an hour to two, 
here in my office if you'd like to learn more about Young Living. What if you're in the group out there in Moon Township and you want to learn more? You're openly invited to come visit us. Give us a call here at our office at 724-942-3002 so we can reserve a seat for you. But Susie Weiss will be our guest on Monday, December 1. Uh, I'll ask her how it all went. Um, much of the activity continued as I left the premises on Saturday. Love to find out how the rest of the day went. And uh, let her explain to you what she intends to do in the office on the morning of December 4th, that free conference on the essential oils. Now, speaking of the schedule, as it shapes up for December, because we're moving into the final, the gun lab portion of November, big week this week, as you well know, Thanksgiving and, and all the festive Black Friday <laughs> and all associated with it. So um, let me start drawing out for you how things are going to shape up around here. Uh, so December 1, Susie Weiss will be here. She also be in the office on December 4th. Susan Smith Jones, we missed her last month. We had a crazy thing happen uh, with the radio show. They were they, they were taken off the air. I thought they were off the air. They were really on the air, and uh, not a mistake on my part. Anyway, Susan Smith Jones will return after a month's absence. Um, it was unplanned for. She could be our guest on Wednesday, December 3rd. Now. Uh, Ty Vincent, a gentleman I'll speak about quite a bit this morning, who's very much involved with this treatment called LDA, and has come up with a whole series of, of offshoots for how this treatment has worked in the past, but has taken it to new levels when it comes to treating various disorders that really have not had a treatment up till now. now Ty Vincent is uh, a doctor who hails from Wasilla, Alaska. Yes, that's right as well as the Kona Coast of the Big Island of Island of Hawaii. So to tell you how tough his schedule is, he spends two weeks in Alaska, and then the poor boy has to go two weeks of Hawaii, and he goes back and forth two weeks here, two weeks there, two weeks here. When I say here, I mean the Alaska. Anyway, uh, he is going to be a guest on our show two times in the up and coming months. The first time... You'll hear him is on December 8th. Now, I'm going to record him off air uh, on the afternoon of the 5th, but I'll bring him to you the very next opportunity we have to present the show. He's going to be talking about autologous antigens. You'll see what I mean by that as the show shapes up today. Ty Vincent, our guest on the 8th. You don't want to miss him. And then, of course, we've moved already to a different paradigm. I say a complete paradigm shift utilizing electroceuticals, and the flow of current in a treatment referred to as microcurrent. I know you're getting a lot of questions about it. Uh, you've asked me a lot of questions about it. And our go-to person in this particular regard is Shannon Gosen. She'll be our guest on the 15th. We're literally launching a new program. We alluded to and just briefly revealed at, at the last show she was with, the program is called Second Call. I believe it's going to change the way things are done around here quite some time. Shannon goes in our guest on the 15th. And as the other dates shape up, I'll let you know who will be coming aboard. Uh, Baresha, you know, um, Baresha, this line of drinks, um, a coffee, a tea, and a lemonade uh, that just taste so good, but also are thermogenically able to burn fat without you doing a thing about it, have a satiety quenching component that if you drink them, you will not eat the amount of food that you ordinarily thought you were going to. It's low glycemic, and there's this thing called blunting the cephalic response. So that when either, even though something sweet is touching the tongue, you don't get a hormone gush as you would with any other sweet substance. I don't know how they do it. I just know they do. Those four things are not done by any other drink, individually or collectively that I know of. So since May, May or June, we've been bringing you the opportunity to learn more about Baresha. We'll continue to have tastings throughout the Western Pennsylvania and the like, and I'll announce when they are. If you want to get involved with Baresha and don't want to wait for the next tasting in your area, you can do it online. You can do it on phone. You can do it on paper. I mean, you can do it any way you want. Uh, the online component is just, uh, why don't you go to my uh, website at pittsburghiprotocol.com. Click on the product icon, 
it will take you to all the products I recommend, but the first one on the list is Beresha. Just follow the prompts from there. Uh, there's an 800 number you can call. Uh, if you'll call here, I'll give you the 800 number. Or you can have Sister Sarah help out in that regard by either doing it on phone where we plug it in the computer for you or on paper, that comfortable way that you grew up with since you were a little child is <laughs> still possible. Yes, you can still register for something and not have to use a computer. Russia has covered all bases and it's providing you with the opportunity to uh, try a, uh, a line of products that just do not have an equal. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, will never be sold in the stores. They're not coming to stores. You got to take some steps to get it in your house. Once you've tried them, I think you'll take those steps. Uh, give us a call here if you need any help. Or just go online and do it yourself. Now, we do have a knock on the door. Why don't you come on in the store? Hello, welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Uh, good morning, Dr. Courtney. I just wanted to call and thank you for uh, providing that Medicare service for your listeners. Uh, Mark Cohen was out and was able to sign three people up. Oh, yeah, that's great. He, By the way, he was in my office last week signing me up. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear he's out and about and helping other folks. Of course, that's what he does, a busy guy. Mark Cohen uh, helps people make the decision that uh, each and every year they have to make in enrolling for their Medicare. Every year they get an opportunity between um, October and December to do it. So you did it just most recently, huh? Yes, Saturday, and he was very, very interesting, and um, I think that's wonderful for you to provide that service for us because there's so many that may have questions, and all they have to do is call him. Yeah, that's all you have to do is call him. Um, uh, by the way, do you have his number? Uh, yes, I do. You know, rather than have me dig for it, why don't you tell us all what the number is, or maybe somebody out there that needs some help between now and December 7th, that's the last day to enroll. What's the number, ma'am? Okay. Let me get my card here. All right. I know you're in a hurry. No hurry. Go ahead. Take your time. Okay. Here it is. Uh, it's 724-827-8278. Um, mm -hmm. And then he has another number here, 412 seven two six three and he said if you call that number and it would go to voicemail it automatically goes to him he'll check the calls later but he'll get right back to you thank you my listeners thank you there are probably a couple folks still having to anguish and languish over making that decision he'll make it very easy for you folks he knows all the plans and everybody has a little bit of a different twist so actually one plan does not fit all everybody sort of finds the niche for them and with the three people that he helped the other day did all of you sign up with the same plan or a different one a little bit different plan but it all worked out all right well ma'am thank you very much for reporting that to my listeners they are benefiting from it and there and with the phone numbers you've given they've got one more opportunity to get marked there this year before december 7th rolls around Yes, and I have his fax number. Would you need that, Dr. Corey? I don't think we need that one right now. Let's let him just make a call to him, and then any information that has to pass between hands, uh, he can give him the fax number, okay? Okay, and thank you for providing that. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you very much for saying so. Okay. There you have it. Mr. Mark Cowan, he was our guest uh, on the day that this launched. It was back in October. Let me just see my crystal ball. Which one? Yeah. It was uh, October 15th. That was the first day that you were allowed uh, to begin to re-enroll every year. Now, Medicare folks make that decision. They're allowed to change plans. And I'll tell you, they do each and every winter. So, um, uh, Mark Cohen, those numbers, 724-827-5093 and 412-243-7263. My honor and privilege to be able to the past I kind of help along to you hey we got another knock on the door come on the store hello welcome well, boy what's on your mind hey good morning dr courtney yes hello uh comment a question hey i see it as an uh, uh, other uh, uh nutrition company i guess if i want to call it that way vitamin nutrition they're starting to use highly questioning and thermogenics in their infomercials well the thermogenic component is usually provided uh i think 
uh, uh, the substance that brings thermogenicity into play is a green tea extract, okay? Yeah. So, like, for instance, in the coffee and the tea that we're using, they put a, a quantity of the green tea extract in there that gives you thermogenicity. And I, don't, I can understand why a lot of companies would want to – what a great – what a great thing to add you're making and trying to sell. The thermogenetic uh, property helps you to burn fat without doing much about it. No, if you add exercise to it, you're really in a much better position than you were without it. And I expect more, Sam. I expect actually more companies to come in with uh, something like that than less. And we just happen to know that Bureshia was one of the first. Uh, the thermogenicity, however, is only one component. Remember, there are three others. Uh, which is satiety quenching and yeah. lo low glycemic, and then that final one, the big one, the one that I find very few, well, I've never found another company that even talked about cephalic response. That's the biggie. That's the one that causes the hormones to gush, and the wrong hormone that gushes is insulin, just not the right thing to have happen. Yeah, I think they're kind of using this. This is like about four in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I turned the radio on. They have a lot of infomercials on. That's what they were. No words. <laughs> well, uh, four in the morning. I'm sorry you had to get up at four in the morning, Sam, but uh, they, they, I'm sure they're, they're having commercials on all health, sorts of health issues in the morning. And there's this, this, this uh, show called Coast to Coast, by the way. I have patients of mine. They're up at two in the morning every day listening to this guy. Do great health shows and other shows, coast to coast. And um, this, this is a different. This is a different channel. But I can't get coast to coast anymore. They they dropped off 104 FM. So, oh, so you used to be the guy that listened to it, huh? Yeah. Well, well I was one of them. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I got a quick question on a nuclear stress test. I I got a letter. I'm supposed to be scheduled for one. What are they looking for? How accurate are these things? How safe are they? Well, to the extent that uh, if you're if you're coronary, this is only for coronary arteries, and if your coronaries are clogged up pretty doggone good, then if they when they inject a dot, uh, they you you go and they get an IV started, they inject some dye and then they take an X-ray of the heart. Okay, now that was without exercise; that was just right off the bat. Then they have you jump up on a treadmill and start walking. And at the end of that exercise period, however long it goes, they inject some more dye and they take a second picture. What's supposed to happen is picture number two better look exactly like picture number one because if there is an area of the second picture that doesn't light up as good as the first picture, it indicates that there is an occlusion, a obstruction to blood flow, that when you demanded more, the heart demanded more, the heart was not supplied with more. I'm talking about blood. So you have to be fairly well compromised in order for that to be positive. I would hate to think that one who has a very excellent outcome from a, a, a nuclear stress test cannot make the jump that all is well. That, oh, I passed, I passed my stress test. I'm clean. Well, no, you're not clean. You're just not obstructed enough so as to interfere with the uh, flow of blood for that second picture. So I know it's a, it's a frequently asked uh, for a test. Um, I tend to, uh, to uh, always question that test at all unless the cardiologist has a good reason for doing it. I don't like the, the use of radioactivity. I certainly don't like the injectable then followed by a a, um, a CT scan. CT is pretty pretty high with radiation, so there's got to be a real reason to ask for it. I would hate to think that it's just what it appears to me, Sam. Like every year, do you do a stress test? Pretty much, it's your time this year. Uh, I the last one I had done was just on the treadmill, Doctor Caminus' office. Uh huh. Uh, this is a different doctor, not a VA hospital, and uh, uh, this is well, the, it's a cardio fellow. He's just a trainee. Sure. Got all this book learning now. He wants to use it, and I was just—I remember reading on hearing on TV about one or two years ago. I think that's Doctor Laputte, or whatever. He was saying that these stress, these nuclear stress tests aren't all that accurate, and uh, a lot of times they lead to even more tests. And he says the—I guess if I remember right, 
the, the cost of the test for the uh, the information gained wasn't worth it. Well, how about this one, Sam? I do remember a number. I'm going to reveal it to you. For a nuclear stress test to indicate that things are not well, you have to have an occlusion of those coronary vessels of at least 70% or more. Now, let me ask you this. Who in the heck wants to wait around to be 70% occluded before they're made aware that they have a problem? I say you go and change this way before a stress te test ever would indicate that you're that gummed up, that you're, you're that obstructed. So 70% is way beyond any level that I would want to, to have allow, allow a person to get to. And so if you're going to have a positive stress test, it really does indicate significant. And I want to, under, well, I want to underline the word significant coronary artery disease in play. I'm hoping that, Sam, if you get this test, you aren't going to have any positive component to it. But my goodness, if you ever did, uh, you'd, you'd have to jump on the bandwagon and make sure you did all the things that you know, and I know that you know them, to do to reverse it. So good luck on this particular stress test if you decide to do it. Yeah, I, th I thought the nuclear stress one, I thought they were, the, the dye they're putting in was emitting in a radioactive stuff, but the flying saucer thing was just collecting uh, rays coming out of your body. Uh, the, uh, you're right. It is emitting radioactive stuff, but it is taken up. It specifically will be specifically taken up by the heart to the exclusion of all other organs. So it's the heart that lights up by virtue of having that radioactive dye injected. And it's usually a cardio, they call it cardiolite. That's a brand name. But uh, it's heart specific. Now, other organs do pick it up, but not nearly at the rate that the heart does. And that's why this test is specifically designed for the heart. But would just a normal treadmill uh, stress test indicate? Uh any kind of blockages or, or oh yeah, if you if you have substantial blockages, a regular old stress test will indicate that by electrical activity, the EKG will start looking funny while you're doing the test, and that's another way, uh, and certainly should be the starting up way that uh, somebody that should do a regular stress test without that die first, I say. I thought Dr. Kimmeter said that too. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's a, that sounds like good medicine to me. Okay, I just thought it was before I call and kind of cancel. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you very well, Sam. And um, uh, to, to, to be subjected to a test like this, uh, which you don't want to have any of the crazy stuff that they would offer for you anyway. Yeah, they've never heard of MCG. So. Oh, they would never heard of MCG. They certainly never heard of chelation. They don't do ECP. They don't correct. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, um, no, uh, we... In your case, Sam, um, maybe you better rethink that. I uh, am. Yeah. I that's why I was hoping I could call you today. I had a <laughs> Friday in the mail. Cause I, if I had a Thursday, I'd have called you Friday. All right. Yeah. Just just do what you normally know you're supposed to do. Which is probably time for us to meet up again. In fact, I know it is. Yeah. And I look, get an MCG test. That's why I wanted to. Uh, Absolutely. I, okay. It just surprised me, but he I got this letter for the nuclear thing. Okay, so maybe you said it right. It's a, it's a fellow in cardiology who's just learning, and he's trying to take his book work <laughs> and apply it to something practical. Uh, let him work on somebody else. Okay, Sam? All right, thanks, Buck. All right. Bye. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> let's go with that. All right, folks. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, get ready to write. If you've got any of these weird diseases that I'm going to mention, or if you know somebody that does, Boy, 2015 is going to be a wonderful year because there's a way to fix every single one of them. We'll be back in a moment to what I'll refer to as the list. Be right back.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard here in KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you today in a Monday morning version of the show. We're coming into that last week in November. A lot of action this week. And, uh, boy, as we're getting ready for 2015, which I envision is a lot of action here in my office, um, there are a number of topics that just have to be discussed in preparation. Now, uh, we've opened it up to you today. I just want to make sure I emphasize that. You can come on in here at any time and uh, set the agenda as you see it by just dialing us up at 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Uh, on point or not on point, of course, as you well know by now, it's okay with me. Now, we have been doing a treatment in our office for a couple of years now, referred to as LDA. Now, you know LDA stands for Low Dose Antigen, and we go back uh, to November 2012 when we first launched this, uh, this the new treatment here. Uh, the godfather of this particular therapy, I use the word godfather a lot. I know you're familiar with Dr. Schallenberger, the godfather of ozone therapy. Well, there's another godfather. He's the godfather of low-dose antigen therapy here in the United States. His name is Dr. William Butch Schrader. His office is in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but he has 90 of us, 90 disciples throughout the entire United States that are able to utilize his treatments and do so very effectively. Now, with respect to the allergies that respond so well to the use of LDA, I'm talking particularly about the inhaled allergies, food allergies, and chemical and mold allergies. These three categories of allergies um, have done a great job here in this office, uh, and if you suffer from any of these allergic responses, I wish you would please uh, go ahead to the website, drschrader.com, read on the LDA subject, and then head to my website at djcmd.com, click on the icon marked archives, and then when the archives come up, scroll to November of 2012 and listen to all the radio shows we did that month because each and every Friday, we called it LDA Friday, and we brought a guest each and every Friday in the month of November of 2012 to discuss LDA as we were just launching it. Now, we've had a great response by using LDA as a treatment in this office, but LDA is about ready to make a major uh, medical contribution that has not seen the effectiveness that it is about going to see when it comes about, uh, about ready to be revealed as it, as it now launches the ability to correct, fix, uh, restore to normal all patients who suffer from autoimmune diseases. These are very problematic diseases in the conventional medical world. Because in the conventional medical world, well, a couple of things we can say. Number one, there's no treatment specifically for any of them that will eradicate the disease. Once you have it, let's just say you're always going to have it. At best, they're going to be, there's going to be immunosuppressive therapy, some um, short-term, meaning every time you have a breakthrough or a crisis, you'll be put on the big boys like uh, prednisone and the like, or long-term with some pretty harsh um, substances like Remicade and Imuran and the like, costing thousands of dollars in treatment, uh, which have really given people some great symptom relief, but the harshness of these drugs puts you at risk for a whole host of other things you don't even want to think about, um, yet you can maybe get some good relief from your um, autoimmune disease symptoms. Be that as it may, um, not ever being able to correct a disease with conventional treatment, we now learn that LDA plays a special role in being able to correct pretty much every autoimmune disease that there is. Now, I'm going to go down through a list, simply because you may never have recognized them as autoimmune diseases, but if you're on this list, the likelihood is very high that your disease or the one that someone that you know suffer from 
actually is correctable and that in its correction uh, you will have to pay no price there's no harm that can come to you when subjected to an LDA treatment because the dilution of the antigens that are used is to a level of 10 to the 17th which is three dilutions short of homeopathic I mean there's nothing in these that can cause you a problem yet they can create and provoke immune uh, and immu immunological um, change so that your body doesn't react to it. Now that is the problem in autoimmune disease. The basic pattern that autoimmune diseases meet is this one. You get an infection sometime in your life. Uh, that infection, it, it, it could have manifested itself in uh, respiratory symptoms. That infection could have manifested itself in gastrointestinal or neurologic or dermatologic or you just name it the disease the first time around which was always bacterial in its scope then is able to be eradicated it is either eradicated by you alone without the help of antibiotics or it is eradicated with the help of antibiotics and your immune system but you do and you are able to conquer the initial infection at some point. Now, here's the catch. Once it's over and you don't suffer from the disease anymore, a unbelievable thing takes place in that mimicry is the medical term for it. The body is able, the immune system begins to use mimicry and recognizes a body part of yours as the original bacteria and directs antibodies to that tissue leading to whatever the new problem has become. That is what autoimmune diseases are. Your immune system reacting against you, utilizing tissue as something that's foreign, but not foreign completely because you did have a bacterial infection of that particular bacteria at some type, sometime in the past, you eradicated it, it's gone. There are no more symptoms that you suffer from it anymore, at least um, that you suffer from as you had when you originally presented with it. If it was a respiratory infection, their symptoms are all gone. If it was gastrointestinal, those symptoms are all gone. But now, whatever the immune system continues to recognize as that bug gets attacked, it gets attacked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, forever. And the only thing that's done in the conventional medical world is immunosuppressive drugs, whether they're in the short term, such as use of steroids like prednisone, or long term with very harsh immunosuppressive drugs. Now, uh, LDA appears as though with the work of Dr. Ty Vincent, who's going to be my guest in the month of December and in the month of January that it has been perfected in terms of being able to identify which mixtures are able to correct the problem. Dr. Tai has been working exclusively with this approach to autoimmune disease ago at our meeting in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So here's the list. Write them down if uh, any one of these pertain to you, but if you write them all down, you're going to miss somebody with some one of them. First off, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh, the name of the bug that usually causes that is Yersinia, but it doesn't have to be Yersinia, and there are other mixtures that may have to be used in order to reverse it. How about this one? Rheumatoid arthritis. Another one on the list. Ankylosing spondylitis these are pain problems usually emanating from the back uh, and, the, and the spine all the way down from the cervical region all the way to the sacrum how about this one fibromyalgia myositis interstitial cystitis itp which is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura i know it's a big mouthful but uh, this is a disease where your platelets literally get taken to a level 
that uh, aren't not even safe. You can't you can't clot when you need to clot because your immune system has attacked the platelet formation. ITP is another one of these diseases. Recurrent tonsillitis. You know some people that continue to get um, throat infections over and over and over again, usually from strep. That more than likely is an autoimmune setup. Uh, PANDAS in kids, P-A-N-D-A-S. And that's an, an acronym for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Strep Infections. Can you see why we call PANDAS, P-A-N-D-A-S? Um, this is manifested in kids who usually present with neurological disorders and behavioral problems all related to the immune system that's really attacking those organs. Um, the gut issues are absolutely at play here. This category of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, whether it happens to be Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, in both cases, these are autoimmune diseases and can be corrected. And so you want to pay, be paying attention when Dr. Ty Vincent comes to the Airways Hope We Code. We'll be talking a lot about it. How about various skin issues such as psoriasis and rosacea? Absolutely can and more than likely are autoimmune in their origin. How about the neurological diseases? We already have case histories of people who've had their MS corrected. It's just intuitive that more than likely, although we have no cases up till now, where Parkinson's and ALS should also be correctable. Uh, but the MS, where there is documented evidence of people having their um, MS completely reversed and corrected, I uh, will let Dr. Ty Vincent ma mention them. Um, how about this um, nephrotic syndrome, uh, chronic vaginitis, endometriosis, Systemic lupus erythematosus, discoid lupus, uh, dis lupus, chronic fatigue, and now I put in the last position uh, the one that I believe is going to blow the lid off the joint, and that's something called Lyme disease. The reason why our profession has done such a bad job with Lyme's disease is that they fully understand the initial phase, the infectious phase, the bacterial phase, where we get infected with Borrelia and um, get that target lesion on the skin. And we, if we bring in antibiotics in those first couple of weeks, this has shown itself to be a completely eradicatable disease if we catch it in that phase. The reason why we're doing so badly with Lyme's disease it was we never seemed to catch it in that phase. We get it a couple weeks later, and at that point, this has turned into autoimmune and never to be correctable by conventional means from that point forward. However, Lyme's disease, as we're finding out through Ty Vincent, and uh, in his experience in the last six months, out of 40 cases of Lyme's that he treated, 38 of them, of the 40 were completely corrected and restored to normal function. That's 38 out of 40. Those are just phenomenal numbers. Obviously, um, I'm very excited that in 2015, we will have the capability of doing those same treatments that Dr. Ty Vincent perfected in Wasilla, as well as the Kona Coast of Hawaii, right here in Western Pennsylvania. Look forward to 2015 to be able to do it. So there's going to be a protocol that we follow. Um, just to sort of outline it today, um, we're going to go at each one of these autoimmune diseases in three stages. Um, and throughout those three, we will get this disorder turned around. The first stage will be the standard bacterial mixtures that we've had for the last two years. Uh, it, appears, it appears that it's still is the place to start. The second step for the protocol is to make autologous antigens from the patient's own 
body fluids, whether that's uh, urine, whether that's fecal matter, whatever, sputum, uh, you name it, uh, skin scrapings, uh, all these are able to yield a uh, immunological um, uh, component that we can give as an antigen. And then finally, the Thai Vincent mixtures, mixtures that he came up with on his own that he's now going to dispense to the 90 disciples throughout the United States. And in those three steps, an answer is going to be found. Now, I'm looking forward to 2015. I'm looking forward to dealing with these autoimmune diseases. I'm looking forward to finally being able to conquering what might have never been even suggested to be conquerable. This thing with Lyme's disease has baffled everybody because they have never gotten off the idea that it's microbial. There are doctors that continue to use every antibiotic under the sun, around the clock, every month, every season, for four or five years. And has it, they haven't gotten it yet, haven't got the message yet. It's just, just not, they haven't adjusted their thinking. If you haven't been able to eradicate this bug in a year or two years, you're not going to be able to eradicate it. Maybe it's not the bug. Maybe it's something else. Well, there's something else is autoimmune, and uh, time ends up. We'll be explaining that to us. All right, folks. Hope you uh, enjoyed writing down the list. If you're on it, come on in to see us. If you know somebody that's on it, tell them about it and have them come in to see us. More on the use of LDA in the treatment of these diseases as the weeks tick by. Okay, let's take a short break. When we come back, you may want to weigh in on uh, LDA or autoimmune. You may, may want to weigh in on um, microcurrent. Anything at all doesn't have to be related to either of those. The number 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. We'll be back in just a moment. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. We're here with you on a Monday morning version of the show. We um, talked a little bit about the LDA phenomenon. It's really going to take some shape here in 2015, especially when it comes to autoimmune diseases. And uh, stay tuned to this station and to this show for more as the weeks go by. Now, we've opened it up to you today. You can dial us up at 412-825-6262. Get, get it off your chest. The pressure will build up if you don't. Uh, we do have a knock on the door. Come on in the store. Hello. Welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Hi, uh, Dr. Courtney. Uh, I was uh, just happened to tune in a station from New York. I, I don't know if you've heard of this, Dr. Christopher Calipai. He said uh, he's getting dynamic uh, results with his... Uh, uh, diabetes uh, protocols. Uh, he uses natural things, but I think maybe the key is that he harvests the uh, uh, stem cells from the body fat of his individual patients, and uh, uh, that uh, perfuses around the entire body and seems to remediate uh, any deficits uh, in uh, the various areas, I guess, including the pancreas. 
Well, you know what? I don't know. Do you say his name is Dr. Calipar? Calipari, I think. Uh, I think it's spelled C A L A P A I. I think. Calipar. Okay. Uh, allow me to uh, uh, check this gentleman out. Uh, the idea is, if he's using stem cells, why am I thinking that the stem cells would be directed to uh, being able to generate pancreatic otic cells? in type 1 diabetes because uh, that's the work that's being done in the investigation phases. Actually, they're very close to being able to have stem cells where they can do that. Is he working at the pancreas level or don't you know? Uh, I, I, all I heard is just a little part of, the, part of the interview. The station wasn't coming in real clear. He, he harvests them from the body fat and then apparently injects them into the body. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he... It doesn't sound like he's injecting it directly into the pancreas. No, no, none of these uh, people that are using stem cells are. But what they're trying to do is to generate pancreatic islet cells that make insulin. And that's why they're, uh, the stem cells that are being used are directed uh, to those who suffer from type 1 diabetes instead of type 2. And so um, I almost intuitively think that this gentleman was talking about type 1 diabetes uh, because those are the only place where stem cells actually even make sense because in type 2 diabetes, you don't need stem cells. Your, your uh, islet cells are working extremely well. Now, in fact, they're working so well that you get gushes of uh, insulin put out by the stem cells. They don't need to be regenerated in any way because they're, uh, they're just hair triggered. That's the problem. There's, a, there's an issue with down regulating them. They're making too much insulin. So um, this word diabetes can get confused. Type 1 is a heck of a lot different than type 2. Stem cells that I traditionally think that are being used in diabetes are directed to those who suffer from type 1. But I, I have no idea. That's why I need to check this Dr. Calipi out. I'll, I'll, head to, I'll head to the internet and see what I can learn and I will re report back. All right? I, I I have the phone number if you want it. Oh hey, give it to me. Okay, uh, five one six seven nine four zero four zero four. Well, not a bad place for me to start. <laughs> one way or the other, I'll be able to report back in some way, shape, or form. I thank you for bringing it to our attention. Uh, one other question: uh, Do you know what PDE five is? Uh, no. Do you want to tell me what PDE five is? Well, it's some kind of compound as you age, uh, according to this naturopath I was listening to, that inhibits the uh, nitric oxide. And uh, he, he's recommending that, uh, I guess, as you get older, you need to have a PDE5 inhibitor. And, and he thinks things like trimethylglycine help. But uh, strangely enough, as a naturopath, he was recommending uh, Cialis even. I guess that increases the blood flow to the brain and the heart. PDE5, uh, you're just a veritable storehouse of information to make me go get more information on. Um, I'm unfamiliar with PDE5. I'll try to familiarize myself with it and bring it back. All right, thanks a lot, Dr. Courtney. Absolutely. We share a lot here, folks. I learned so much from you listeners. Thank you very much for the call whenever you provide them. We're in a um, sort of coming around the home stretch of, uh, of our show today. We've opened it up to you by giving us a call at 412. 825-6262. We have another knock on the door. Come on in the store. Hello. Welcome aboard. Go ahead. Good morning, doctor. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> About this um, new LDA. Yes. That you have. Okay. Now, I had, uh, last year I had the LDA treatment for the uh, Hashimoto's. Yeah. And it wasn't effective. So there you, you're the perfect person that should uh, be comforted by what I'm now trying to reveal. What we're learning, and I, and, and I know who I'm talking to, so with you in mind, but everybody in mind, when we used Yersinia, we worked with the Hashimoto's that the original bug was Yersinia. And so the mixture that we've been using exclusively for Hashimoto's has been Yersinia. Here's what we've learned. It can... It can be Yersinia and usually is, but if it's not, there is another set of mixtures to work through to get to the actual one that's causing you the problem. And, the, and, the, and, the, and I believe one of the difficulties with our present 
our, we'll call it our past way of doing LDA, is you were limited to these eight weeks. You got an injection, then you had to wait till eight weeks before you got the next injection. Then you had to wait eight weeks more. There's always two months in between each injection, correct? Correct. Well, what's going to change for everybody, and including you, is we have thrown the eight-week rule out, and here's why. Any mixture that we use, we must see a change immediately, and I'm talking about within the first week after having received it. If no reaction or no improvement, whether but let's just say no reaction, because you can Im either improve after one of these injections, or you can have a pretty uh, a bad uh, set of symptoms like not feeling well after one of these injections. And either case, that's a good sign. The fact that you've reacted at all said that is the mixture that you need. It may need to be made a little more diluted, but if you respond within the week with a mixture that we use, we that means we've stumbled across your mixture and we just have to refine the dilution level in order to get it corrected. If you do not respond within a week, we are able to change mixtures and move right to the next mixture and then the next and then the next, only putting a week of span of time in between each injection before we're able to stumble across. Because there may be, and quite honestly there are, uh, eight or ten different mixtures that we can use. So I think the biggest change that we now know of that we didn't know before is that all Hashimoto's, for instance, doesn't necessarily have to be Yersinia-induced. And if it's some other bacteria, we can move quickly to find out what that bacteria is, only putting a week of time in between each injection until we come across it. Did I say that clear enough? Am I yeah. clear? Yeah. It's, yeah, you're doing you're, you're doing a, a different experimental treatment that you. Uh, yeah, I guess the way to say it is, uh, if we were just coming up with the postulation, it would be experimental. But after two years of Ty Vincent working with this, it's proven itself to be absolutely true. So I think the experimentation has been done, uh, and now let's say that the good part is we can learn from those experiments and move into actually treating people rather quickly and getting this thing to the point where um, with within a short period of time, we'll find the bacterial mixture that's needed, and whatever one that is, that's the one we'll use, and then we'll take that out for the year. I believe I told everybody that does LDA that you do this for one year uh, every two months until we are able to space this out to time periods much more than just uh, two months in between injection. Hopefully, that may mean we could do one a year or one every 18 months or so forth. But you got to have the right mixture to ever get to that point, and the mixtures need to be worked through rapidly and changed at each time if nothing changes. That's the change for this time around. Okay? Uh, I just recently got over a part of cellulitis a couple of weeks ago, and I've had this three or four times in the past 10 years. Okay. Does that have any bearing on the... Uh, this is a recurrent cellulitis. It could very well be autoimmune too because there should be no reason why you continue to get an infection. Is this a, is it happening in the legs? Where yeah, I get it in my foot. My, it's always on the right foot, mm -hmm. ankle and calf. Well, now that's an interesting. Three weeks. Would you say the last sentence you said? That's before? about three weeks. That's about three weeks. Well, and, you know. well, that, and do you treat it with antibiotics each and every time it happens? Well, I did. Uh, the last time I had it was seven years ago. But this is the first time I didn't I didn't go for uh, conventional treatment with antibiotics. And I used, uh, I used a diluted peroxide treatment, and uh, it went away in three weeks. It may very well be autoimmune related too, because uh, what we do notice is that what may manifest itself attacking one organ or one set of tissues doesn't necessarily have to remain with it. So it's just uh, we'll try to figure that out one on one. Let's say that's in the equation. We'll let it go at that for now. All right.
All right. Thank you very much for the call. It was a great way to answer the question for everyone else. And we're not tied into eight-week um, delays in treatment. They happen weekly now because if you get no reaction, then we move on to a new mixture. And uh, more on that subject with each in advancing show and uh, hopefully bring up the speed on them. All right. We are right here in the gun lap. we got about a minute to go. I want to thank you all for coming aboard today. Don't forget, uh, we're, we're going to do a live show on Wednesday. We won't do one on Friday. And then we move into December, folks. Uh, and things will pick up pretty rapidly when December 1 rolls around. But we got uh, Susie Weiss coming in here on December 1. Uh, she'll be in the office December 4, 10 o'clock in the morning. Those that want to be involved with it, give us a call, 724. Nine four two three zero zero two. Uh, time to wrap it up today and say goodbye. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney saying so long for an impact on your health. <laughs>